Each one of us has our own favorite comfort food, that one food that you just want to tuck into on those cold wintry nights. Mine, interestingly enough, is mshatra. It's a Middle Eastern rice and lentil dish that is served with fried onions and it is so good. Most of us have not been exposed to mshatra, but this is a dish that you're going to want to make. Not only is it super cheap to make, it is absolutely delicious and I promise it will be one of your favorite meals. This recipe comes from probably my favorite chef of all time, Yotam Otolenghi. I think he's not only a remarkable person, but a really remarkable chef. Now, his recipe from Mjatara is my favorite, and it's way more complicated than most. If you Google Mjatara and you look online, most of them are, are flavored solely with cumin. Now, Otolenghi, of course, in his normal style, <laughs> he, he flavors his with cumin seed, with coriander seed, allspice, cinnamon, turmeric, salt, pepper, and just a little bit of sugar to kind of offset the earthiness of those lentils. And so this is way more complicated than it needs to be. If you don't have all of these spices, use what you have. Or if you just have cumin seeds or you want to make this super simple, cumin seeds is very, very traditional. So you can just omit the, us, the other spices and go for cumin. What you need for this dish is lentils, either brown or green. These are just Maro lentils. It's an Italian style, but any lentil that you um, can find in your store is fine for this dish. Black lentils and red lentils, stay away from those. Black are really firm and kind of have a bite, and the red ones will just cook into a creamy paste, so that's not what you want. But any sort of brown or green lentil works. And basmati rice. Basmati specifically, because this dish is so simple, you really need a flavorful aromatic rice. So my preference is a good Indian basmati. I know a lot of you like cooking with local ingredients or regional ingredients. Um, I just haven't found, I haven't had really good luck from California basmati. So I go for Indian and onions. I have yellow and red only because that's what I have. So you can use any kind of onion you want. And this is a little bee sunflower. It's just a chickpea flower. It's ground up chickpeas. And I'm using that to make this dish gluten-free for those of you who don't do regular flour. But if you don't have chickpea flour, just use regular all-purpose flour. And it's not even really vital. It just gives a nice little coating um, on the onions when you fry them. And then some sort of high heat oil for frying the onions. And in this case, I'm using sunflower. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and rinse our lentils and put them in a pot that has a nice tight fitting lid. Cover them with about an inch of water and we're going to cook them for 15 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes, just until they're firm tender. Firmer than you'd want to eat, but not falling apart. Next, we're going to rinse our rice and I always rinse rice really well so it doesn't get that kind of sticky, gummy, different than chewy rice. Chewy rice is a glutinous rice that's actually inherently chewy. But the starch on the outside of rice is often not very good. And so we want to get that off just to keep our rice really fluffy and separate. So while the lentils are doing their thing, we'll go ahead and slice up our onions. a fair amount of salt and our flour. Now just mix them up enough to coat them. We're going to actually cook this in batches because we want our onions to get really nice and brown and fry and not overcrowd our frying pan so that they just kind of stew in the oil. Now that my oil is up to temp, I'm going to go ahead and fry the onions and I'm going to fry them in batches. So I'm only going to do a third at a time. 
My lentils are done. They're kind of poofy. They're a little bit um, firm in the middle, which is exactly what I want. Now this is really yummy lentil water and we're gonna want to keep this. So I'm going to drain the lentils, but I'm gonna reserve the water to add back in to cook our rice with. Now when I'm frying my onions, I'll cook them for five to seven minutes on high, but watch them because they'll burn in a nanosecond. And then when they start to get brown, just maybe like less than 25% of them start to get brown around the edge, then I'll turn my heat down to like medium high and finish frying them at that. While my onions are frying, I went ahead and just um, drained the lentils into a beaker because I want one and a half cups of lentil water. And if you have extra, just dump it out. You just wanna make sure that you have um, the right ratio so that your rice doesn't get all soggy and squishy. So I've drained off all the extra oil and put my heat back over medium low and I'm gonna go ahead and toast my seeds for just like a minute. And then we're gonna add in the rice, a little bit of olive oil, the rest of our spices, saute it for just a couple minutes, add in the lentils, water, put a lid on it, and call it good. And when I add the water and rice, I turn the heat up to high because I want that water to, to come to a boil. So once it's boiling, I'll put the lid on and turn it down to as low as you can get it. You wanna just steam that rice and have a towel ready. So after 15 minutes, we're going to quickly take the lid off the rice, cover the lid with a towel and put it back on and let it sit for an additional 10 minutes. Now this is just going to absorb any sort of condensation so you don't get soggy rice around the edge um, and you don't want the extra water dripping down into your dish. Mm. Now this is the um, very tricky part because you want to lightly toss the onions in and fluff this, but you don't want to break up your rice. So I'm going to take roughly half of our beautifully fried onions and just carefully fold them into the rice mixture. We're going to reserve the other half of the onions to serve on top. Now I love this with a dollop of yogurt or even just a small cucumber salad which is nothing but cucumbers, yogurt, a tiny bit of lemon, garlic, and maybe some cilantro. It's so good. Ah, that makes such a mess. And then we'll take a good amount of these delicious fried onions and mound them on top. And there you have it, mjatara. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite comfort meals. And I love this one warm. It's really delicious warm, but it's also super good room temperature. And it's a fantastic dish to take places, especially like big potlucks, because it's gluten-free, it's dairy-free, it's vegan. It's just one of those really delicious, um, kind of surprising dishes. It doesn't look super lovely and colorful and beautiful, but it more than makes up for it in flavor. I hope you enjoy it. If you've had mjatara, um, leave me a comment below and let me know if you love it as much as I do.